A high wall hydroelectric dam like this one on the Baker River would spell imminent death to most young salmon trying to make their way down the river and then out to the ocean. But just before the drop off, you can see a portion of one of the most sophisticated operations in the country to keep those fish alive. It's Puget Sound Energy's fish passage system designed to allow salmon, specifically Baker sockeye, to access miles of habitat the utility's two dams once mostly blocked off. It's a tremendous success story. Ron Roberts is the vice president of energy supply for Puget Sound Energy, or PSE. For their last license on the Baker 20 years ago, the utility invested a whopping $170 million for fish on the brink of dying out. One of our big values is we do the right thing. And to me, Baker River is a great example of doing the right thing. PSC built its first Baker Dam to generate electricity in 1925. And right off the bat, the company worked to mitigate for the harm they brought to the ecosystem, starting with fish ladders, aerial trams carrying sockeye, and other technologies. But nothing worked well enough to get the species back on its feet. This run for years, a uh, period of 70 years, averaged around 3,500 and then uh, fell down to a low of 99 in 1985 and really was on the, the brink of uh, extinction. Arnie Aspeland is PSC's senior resource scientist. He led the aquatics team through the last federal relicensing that came up with a new plan. And this is the outcome. From that dismal low point of 99 adult sockeye coming back in 1985, the run increased to a record 32,700 returning five years ago. Numbers never seen before. The process has been uh, very, very fulfilling. By working with stakeholders, including Skagit Valley tribes and state and federal resource managers, this is what PSC devised on the Baker. They use guide nets to move young fish into what are called floating surface collectors. We funnel them into holding tanks with each fish counted by hand before loading them into a massive steel crate. They boat the box of fish to shore, then truck them around the dam. After that, they spit the fish into tanks for resting. And this is the last move. They shoot the juvenile fish through a pipe back into the baker, where they can swim down river and out to sea. Adult fish are helped in a similar way as they come back to spawn. It was huge for the tribe. Scott Schuyler of the Upper Skagit Indian Tribe was the lead negotiator with PSC on the Baker Project. And he's leading the tribe's effort right now in the relicensing of Seattle City Lights dams on the Skagit. Schuyler says while PSC looked for solutions for their impacts, so far, Seattle City Light is focused on denying or questioning the impact their project has on struggling salmon. It's been a lot more difficult and we don't think there's the, the, the same openness or willingness to accept uh, responsibility for, for past harms, if you would, and that, that we, we saw dealing with the other utility. We've made a lot of changes and we are really committed to doing things differently than we were up until January of this year. City Light so, CEO Deborah Smith has apologized to stakeholders for the utility's first two years of rocky negotiations and promises to continue with a new approach to find common ground. I'm glad for the Upper Skagit that they, that they had a good experience working with PSC on the Baker Project. And I hope that a couple of years from now, they'll look back and they'll say, boy, it was a rough start, but we wound up really having a good process with Seattle City Light. After years of sitting on the banks of the Baker, for the Upper Skagit tribe, the return of sockeye means a return to practicing their treaty right to fish. This year, it's the only river in the region producing enough sockeye to do so. This is the sole uh, bright spot in Puget Sound and, and on the west coast, I believe, where you have a little bit of harvestable fish and you can thank the uh, utility working with the agencies, the tribes to develop this uh, enhancement program. We align with the values we believe our customers adhere to, that salmon are a culture of the Northwest. They're an extremely important piece of tribal culture. It's everyone pulling in the same direction, really, that uh, delivers the kind of results that we're seeing. 
You might be wondering, how does Puget Sound Energy pay for all that, especially given the fact that they're a for-profit company? PSE tells me they pass it on to their customers. They have about 1.2 million of them who receive electricity from the utility up and down Western Washington, including the Kirkland residents behind me here. Uh, PSE also tells me that costs their customers about one additional dollar a month to support salmon and Native American treaty rights on the Baker. I'm Susanna Frame reporting live in Seattle.